last week I showed you how we discovered what was in that mysterious barn just over there and it turns out it was possibly full of rubbish. We haven't had time to go through all of it. We definitely need a skip or two. I don't know about burning all the fabric that we found. I'm just not going to spend time on that right now and we're also waiting for our pole saw to be replaced. So we can't even talk about the boat. We can't even expose that today. But I do have loads of seedlings that I want to get into these, well, this greenhouse. And I want to take your idea up, trying to get any of the glass from that if we need to for this one, because that one is, is in a worse state than this and it's smaller. But I also have a big stash of glass that the previous owners had already stowed away. And that's just here. So we may even be okay using those. Obviously they need cleaning up and there's loads of really old newspapers stuck on them. I'm curious how old they are. I've tried to read it, can't find any dates. And yeah, I don't know if you saw that little video clip of my dad showing me how to cut greenhouse glass or just, gre or just glass. And that clip went viral on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and maybe TikTok. I think TikTok, the harder to please over there, but he showed me how to cut it with this vintage Shores glass cutter which is full of oil. I've done a little test on some scrap pieces of glass because obviously there's a lot broken around here. It went okay-ish, obviously that's a smaller bit, but I'm hoping I can get enough good cuts out of all of the glass that I've got. I expect there's going to be some errors. So let's see if it wasn't just a magic trick, but this is going to be my setup here. I was going to use a flat surface, on my saw horses, but then I found that, this old table that was hidden between the greenhouses anyway. And we need to give it a really good clean. It's filthy. There's all green, mossy algae stuff everywhere. We did think about taking all the glass out, cleaning it, and then putting it back because obviously there's bits trapped in here, but I, I just don't want that effort. I just want to clean up what we've got, try and make good as easy as possible and then just have a go at putting back what is missing. Also, there should be two window openings on this. And I've noticed that this one is missing because the opener to it is on the floor and it's partially broken. So I may just take out this bottom metal bit. I'll have to unscrew it or unbolt it and then just replace it with another glass panel. But I've had to look on YouTube how to put these clips in because I've never done this before. And that's also why I haven't got around to doing it by now because I procrastinated thinking this looks hard work. Just wish me luck. First thing we're gonna do is give it a good clean. Mr. TCD's already been working on here and exposing the pavers. So what we might do is we might be able to fix this because we have found the, the piece missing that goes there, but this needs some serious teasing back because it's not on there anymore. But if we can't put it all back together properly, what I might do is take your advice again and put some netting around it, maybe a fruit cage or brassicas. I really like that idea because I've got so many. I've got so many seedlings and not enough raised beds. And this is another thing that we're up against is bramble crowns in between. Uh, this might not be so important because we need to focus on that one primarily, but we might have to lift this up, try and dig it out, and then maybe put some black sheeting down. We'll see how things go. I'm just hoping I can get all this done in a day. And we've got to tread carefully because there's glass everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. Now, because I've not done this before, I didn't know whether they come in standard sizes, but I thought I'll measure the width of this and it's exactly the same as a width of that, but just a different height. My phone's ringing. <laughs> Sorry, you'll have to wait, it's my mum. <laughs> to try and give me a helping hand, I'm gonna use my pressure washer with some foam spray that really is for the car. I'll give that a go. attach it back to the pressure washer but now we've got another delivery so we'll have to stop this for a second back in a tick look what's just arrived any guesses what this is 
we are ready to create some hooped housing for our raised beds. It is poly pipe, water pipe, 25 millimetres. We'll just stick that here for when we're ready. Ah, right, let's get back to this. It's looking cleaner already, isn't it? There's some silicon beading stuff being put on in places. I measure up for my first glass pane and find I need shorter ones for the sides. So I'm going to see if I've got anything already that I don't have to cut. 61 wide. This one's the right width and it's too long so I could cut this off, this damage and make good with that. Oh, we've got plastic there. Before I go for gold, I'm going to test with a really crappy piece that doesn't look any good for anyone. I use a spirit level as a straight edge on a longer piece, then use my dad's tapping technique as I wasn't sure how brittle they were. However, this was easier said than done. Oh, sh No, I'll keep practicing. This time, I apply more firm pressure. I don't think this is going well. I gave up on that one and moved on to something smaller for an ego boost. Try a crappy piece. worked why didn't that other one work try another piece that worked i think i need to put pressure on and go slow i don't think it helps having a straight edge like this actually it's blocking me it's working no I think the problem is, as I try to put pressure and score it, I've got the end of this tool being blocked by the spirit level. So I think I'm just going to look for something thinner. Right, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I've come back with a few straight edges, all sorts of things. Couldn't find anything smaller. I'm going to try with this because this is more likely to be the one that I need. So I'm doing a dress rehearsal, imagining I've got a bigger piece of glass. And imagining this is where I need to cut it. So let's see if this has a problem. It will be about three mil or two mil away from the edge. So I'll have to offset it a little bit, but let's just go like this. So I'm pushing it down and going slowly. And then if I take that over the edge, imagining it's bigger glass, cross my fingers, and then hopefully that works. It just didn't work with the chunky spirit level that was deeper than this knobbly bit. It was throwing me off. So I'm glad I've got all this stuff to practice on. I'm going to try an angled piece. Let's try again. Yeah, should we just go for it? Now, I don't think I have to worry about being absolutely perfect to the millimetre because there's a little bit of room here, about five millimetre of space. So now I'm going for gold. Wish me luck, which most of the time when I say that, it doesn't go well. I don't think you're wishing hard enough. My fingers in the way. Oh, I've gone off. <laughs> I've gone off. But I should have a bit of allowance. That's something I've learnt for next time. It matters now. Come on. Oh, I don't think it's working. Oh, I thought I could... I went to tap it again with a little protruding bit and I got a gouge and it might have been all right otherwise. Someone did say they get brittle over time. Maybe it was just brittle. That's so annoying. And now I'm practicing something that I didn't before and that is scoring with pressure, gentle tapping and patience. <gasps> I'm taking it. I'm having it, running with it. What a relief. Will it fit though? That's the question. 
Right, I've got my little hooks that I need to put on. So apparently these hooks need to go, well, one there and one there for the glass to sit on. Well, let's put my cut towards the top. I'm just hoping it fits. Because it also goes in a channel. God, that would have been awful if that broke. Right. Oh, thank God. Oh, it's in, it's in. I'm all right with that. I just, can I do it another 16 times? I don't know. I have heard that there's somebody locally that cuts it for you, but I don't know how dear it is. So I've got these little clips that I need to put into the sides now. So I need this sticking out here to trap the glass. So I'm gonna put that in there, put that in, and then bend that there. So that's in place and it's got the rubber there. Oh, thank God for that. I was very nervous on that cut then. Maybe after three bad cuts, just pack your stuff and go home, which is just over there. Now I bought these separately just in case because I might end up using some of this later on, but I could have just stolen these clips, which work slightly differently. So I'm probably use some of those later as well, because I don't think I've got enough of these. I like that. Oh, yes. Oh God, I've got two more to go on this side at least. So far, my success rate is one out of three. I have to stop there and then... And I don't know if I got it over there, but hopefully... You can't rush it either. Thank God for that, because... We're trying to make it all uniform. Yes, I could have gone for just one whole piece and then did one final cut for the top, but we agreed just to try and get it uniform. If this fails, we can go down the road to someone who cuts it for us, but I don't want to give in. Right, I need some clips. We'll have nothing left of that by the end of this. That's in, I just need some clips. Come on, come on, don't break the glass. Hello, hello. So that's one side done, apart from that. For the next panes, I had to remove the rear ones from top to bottom to get to the broken ones. The good news is that the bottom two that are broken, I have the right sizes for those. So all I have to do is just put it all back together and get two nice glasses out. That one's a good one, filthy, but it's going in. Let's just get rid of that first. Okie doke, this is perfectly square. So now I've got to put them all back from the bottom to the top. Let's get some clips in there. Yes. Next, we'll have the dirty side out so I can clean it. Oh, yep, yeah, that's in. Oh, two more hooks. Good, now I need to work on those clips quickly. Yeah. Done, thank God for that, that wasn't that bad at all. Just a few more to go, quite a few more. Now I'm gonna persevere with the funny shaped clips. So I've watched a YouTube video again, I'm meant to put this end, the short end, into the little channel there, and then push the longer end into the glass. Yay! Right, let's carry on with the rest. Actually, they are easier than the W clips, but harder to get out. So the beauty I found about this job is, take for example the two broken ones that I've just taken out. I can actually cut those down now for the side panels. I've not done this for about half an hour, so hopefully I've not lost any kind of knack that I even got. I have to pause and then carry on with the pressure. I can't do this like my dad, all in one. Hey! <laughs> Get that in before I break it. Oh, come on, come on. Do it. I found another broken one, let's just see. Yes. Pause and then continue. Right. 
Wish me more luck this time. Yay, you did it! <laughs> Thanks very much. So you see me made the good cut for this one. Now I can actually slide this one down, the top one, to fit on top of my hooks and put the other one that I've just cut in. I'm happy with how this is going. Oh, that's in. That's not. Oh, it's because it's silicon on the top of this one. Oh, let's put it upside down. Hopefully it'll miss the silicon. Yes. After I'd done most of the side panes, I moved on to replacing the missing roof glass, but I had to put hooks on them first to slot them together. This could be awkward. I might need your help. You push this glass up, just a touch. Just, that's it. Yay. And then more clips. Yeah. You know what? I'm getting better and better at this now. Almost an expert. <laughs> Yes. Yes, and that fits in that little, there's a little lip here that it fits into. Now I nearly cut another piece of 45 and a half centimetres. Then I thought, hang on, that top layer looks so much bigger. So we've just measured and it is a full square. So what we're gonna do is remove the protruding clip for a start, push a big piece up there, hopefully, well, might need Mr. TCD to help me with that, but it also means I need some hooks on this second one first so I can just slot it in. I need one end in. Oh, oh that's a relief. That's a relief. Tell you what it was doing though, the glass was shaving the uh, rubber seal and I just thought you know what sod it, just go for it. So I'm going to get some clips in hungry work this. All right, that, that one's in. Oh, you devil. Oh, I don't like it. So I've run out of the big square window panes for this. Now I need to start stealing from this. Rob from Peter to give to Paul. Oh, at least it'll land in the channel. So hopefully by the end of this, I've got one decent one and this we can do something else with it. So if you've got any tips on how to turn it into a fruit cage, let me know. So don't forget, this used to be another window opening and that part is broken. So what I'm gonna do is unbolt the metal piece and just put some hooks in just like the rest. So it'll just look like this, hopefully. Oh, you need to go in the bath. So it looks like I could just add a window opening at any point if I wanted to, because this piece is attached with bolts in this channel. Oh, no. Yes. Same thing. We've removed the um, opening. Oh, yeah. Didn't need a hand. So you can do this on your own. Mr. TCD was getting rid of all the really big bramble crowns underneath the soil. And there's a massive gouging hole. In fact, look at this. Look at this. Look at the size of that thing. That was in the centre of there. We do have quite a few, but I was feeling smug. Yeah, I've, I've finished this end, I've got the back to do. And um, he said, that's not right. Can you see what I've done here? That's wrong. I've put these two the wrong way around. I'm gonna take them out and put them back. Oh, irritating. So we had to call it a day yesterday because it started to get dark and it started to rain. And now I'm on my final piece, which is that triangular piece missing over there. Luckily, I found a broken window that is just the right width, so I don't have to make two cuts on this one. But because I've slept on it, have I lost the knack? Also, after sending my dad a clip of what I did yesterday, he said I didn't always have to tap the score from underneath with this. I could actually place this underneath, press it down for a clean cut. I've also seen another YouTuber use a cane, well, this is a plastic one, to leave it underneath and press it but you know what I'm going to stick to what I know for this because I don't want to mess up actually for this angular piece he did actually say I might need to tap this underneath anyway right I'm okay with that I always wonder if it's going to break the glass so now that one's done 
the last one I need to do is this window opening and we do have some perspex over there looking at the size it does look like the same as the larger ones at the top so hopefully I don't have to make any cuts and there's one ready made that I can just push in so I found this old ICI one which is uh, needs the film taking off and if it works out and we know it's the right size we can always pinch another one from over there I just don't know what size that is up there I'm guessing it's all the same because they're all uniform no, it's just going everywhere. So I'm going to try and slot that in and hopefully I don't need any clips for this because there's a little lip. That doesn't, yeah, it is folding, isn't it? Yeah, push, try and push it for me. It is a little bit too long, isn't it? It's sagging, that's a problem. And I keep hitting, hitting. Oh, I've got it, I've got it. So if I measure there, I'd say 25 millimeters. So I've masking taped it, marked it, I'm ready to cut. Makeshift workbench. Don't have to be long. Forget it. <laughs> oh God. Try again. So I had to go with another piece of Perspex and look what happened. It's just, you know what, I've never had Perspex do that to me while I hand saw it, so I'm guessing it's brittle so i'm now going to use it as a template to cut proper glass and see if this fits hopefully that'll slot in have i cut enough off i might cut 30 mil off if that's too tight as it is for a piece of glass i don't know how i'm going to cut another five mil off without ruining a piece of glass please work oh i need your help can you lift the glass up? Yay! Right, how am I going to get that clipped in? And that was done with a bit of force. So now the greenhouse is done, I want to fill it and you can probably see why. We are in our conservatory. I've got loads of seedlings growing. We'll uh, cut through this wood in a minute. But my current potting bench is this with a riddle and I'm going like this, separating seedlings and it's hurting my back. And rather than save this for another video, we need to do the Sharpie. So we're going to bundle it together and hopefully I can reclaim some workshop space back and then make a workshop outside somewhere. So this is my design. As you can see, it's really basic, easy and simple. And I've chosen this way because I only want to use two types of materials that I've already got. With more structural pieces, rather than cutting a load of slats that I've got, just because it'll be quicker to do. And I've designed this tailored to my height, which is five foot four. I will leave a cutting list either on the screen or a clickable download link for you to grab, but you might want to adjust it for your height. And I purposely missed a slack there, for example, because I didn't want to block all of the sunlight and I wanted to be able to hang stuff on this top bit if I want to, or I could even add a little shelf there. So I'm using the cheapest of wood, which is CLS, structural timber, and that is 63 millimeters by 38 and a load of tongue and groove slats that I got from my dad's wood yard that he didn't want anymore. But you could use whatever wood you want for the shelving part. My cut list, which hopefully you'll be able to grab yourself, it tells me how many cuts I need per structural length. And then I can just go through it nice and quickly. I've also designed it in a way where I do not have to cut any of the slats. So I'm saving time there. So all I need to do is just cut the, uh, the bones of it. So first I'm cutting a load of 550 millimeter shelf supports and I've got two lengths of that to cut and I should be left with a little off cut that Mr. TCD can throw on his fire. Now, if you're wondering where I got that from, it's actually open cut list, which is an extension on SketchUp. So it's designed for maximum efficiency with all your cuts. You just tell it what length your wood is and then it tells me the best way to cut it without too much waste. So this is all the wastage I'm left with. I don't think that's too bad. Very efficient. It's stopped raining now, thank goodness, but I do know it's watertight and I'm gonna just empty this little bit of water out of my wheelbarrow. We'll stick all the cuts in here and take them to the greenhouse. Right, let's grab our things. I'll grab a tape measure. I'm taking a dog bed for a knee pad. Besides, he's already loving it in there. I think he's gonna be my greenhouse buddy. Go on then. Oh, you wanna fetch Teddy? Okay. Oh God, I need a workshop. 
Oh, it's nice in there. A bit dirty, but it's, it looks nice and warm. So I've got my front legs in front of me all lined up. I've lined them up with a straight edge as well. I've marked where I want my first shelf to be. And then I'm going to mark where my next one is. It's probably going to be about there. I've got my measurements so I can mark it out. I'm getting dripped on as well because I've just opened the window. It's quite hot in here, you know. 57.9. Now I've got those lined up, I need to do the same for the back legs. So now I need to take them apart and start building them in sets. So I've got a juggling act going on at the moment. This is balancing on two while this is resting towards the end. These are tongue and groove, so I'm going to do my best to just join them up together and then bang, screws in very quickly. Mm, it's not going to go. Oh, frick. I think these are a bit swollen. With a bit of manipulation I got there in the end. I didn't actually bother calculating too much about the tongue and groove even though I knew I was going to lose a bit but I need to get it screwed in now so I can play around with it so I'm making sure my 20 mil is overhanging about there I'm going to put the screw slightly further back so I don't make this too tight for my next slat to go in now I'm marking 20 mil from this side for an overhang So I've got it roughly in place, apart from I'm going to add another support. Now I need to mark 535 millimetres from here. That one will go there. And the other one is roughly going to go around there. Right, we'll try and get that last one in. Oh, the sun's come out for me. For the slats on the shelves underneath, I spaced them apart, eyeballing them, then screwed down. These will allow debris, water, or anything to fall through the gaps. So I wasn't sure about using this top bit, but I think it adds extra strength. So I'm gonna add it. And I could also add a cross brace that way and that way, or even add some more noggins in the back between. But I don't think I'm gonna bother because I'm not gonna be moving it. Or well, I don't plan to anyway, I'm gonna leave it here. If I do wanna take it outside and I feel like it needs extra support, then I definitely will. So now I'm gonna pre-drill and screw this down to the top. I need this flush on the front because I'm gonna add some slats on there. It's Friday home time, I'm gonna bang these last two slats in and then tomorrow I'm gonna to add a washing up bowl over there and I've got a riddle to sit inside, but that's only just arrived. Oh, and treat it as well. I think you and I are gonna be best chums in here, aren't we? This one was to stop anything rolling off the back. The last slat in. Hopefully I can find some hooks and some tools are short enough for this. Don't know, but I'm sure I'll find something. I really can't wait to fill this and start using it. No more back pain. Right, we'll have a break, but you won't have to. Wow. So we've woken up to some gorgeous weather and it's toasty in here. So much so, I'm going to open this. Let's get an airflow going. There, that'll do. It can go a bit more, we'll stick it to that. But we've taken the bench out, outside, because I need to treat it. I don't want to treat it in quite a confined space because I'm using wood preservative for this. This is what I've got. I'm going for a coloured one because some of the wood is quite dirty and then I can make it all uniform. And then hopefully it can dry in the sun while we have some quick breakfast and then come back and cut a hole for my washing up bowl. I've brought a special tub for this. It's so muddy out here, I can't wait to just dig some of this out and maybe put some aggregate down. I don't know what we're going to do, but we can't live like this. Anyway, I am going to put it in an old Quality Street container. I don't know if you remember this project, it turns into a store, but I think this is perfect to stain and stick in there. Are you happy with how this is going? You didn't want to leave the greenhouse last night, did you? Right, it's going in. It's looking nice, it's not too dark. Yeah, let's get the ends, the thirsty ends. 
just in case I do want to leave it outside. So now it's time to position where I want my washing bowl to be. So I need to put it upside down for this to draw around the outside of it. Then I can draw a slightly smaller gap inside to cut so it doesn't fall through. So now I just need to get a tape measure. I've already marked a center of this point. And yes, I did a center point of that as well, just to roughly get it where I want it. And then I'm going to use a tape measure all the way around to get it center of that. Eight point seven. So now I'm drawing around it, but I've got to keep it as straight as possible because there's a curved edge here. So the lip is 12 millimetres. So I'm marking a centimetre reduced from the outside line, which is about there. So now I'm drawing a load of lines where I think is centre of it. If I do that enough times, I can roughly get the centre. Oh, shh. a bit difficult on tongue and groove. So because I've drawn a load of lines, I'm able to roughly get centre and then put my ruler there, which I know the bowl is 34 centimetres diameter and reduce it by a centimetre for the lip. So what I've done is I've drilled a hole and put a screw through a scrap piece of wood. Then I'm gonna drill another hole for a pencil to go in to line up with that. I'll need to cut that down and back. Make sure that's right. And I want it about there. So now I can unscrew that and drill my hole. Oh, come on, pen come on, pencil. moment of truth and it's never going to be too tight so while the bowl is in there I can actually use my riddle over the top and sort out some soil but I want to know will that fit in there yeah so if I wanted to I could have this bucket underneath if I'm not using the shelf so I'm very happy with that well the sun's gone it's now piddling it down a little bit I'm gonna get some shelter in my greenhouse also, we really need to sort this out. It's very uneven because we've been taking out tons of crowns. In fact, Mr. TCD did that while I was working on the bench. And because we've been walking back and forth and it has been raining on and off, it's really muddy. So we really need to sort this entrance out because look at it, it's just awful. And I just want to be comfortable and I don't want to slip into the glass. I really just want to do a quick test with my bowl. This is what I've been looking forward to. I'll tell you what I'm missing though, a little scooper. That's what I'm missing. But have a look how this is gonna work. So I'm gonna put some in. Let's move that out of the way. And shake. Oh, some's going over there though. <laughs> well, most of it is going in there. It's helping. Or I could just go like that. I think I'd rather shake. But check out my little pal. Hey, up, pal. Are you can enjoy it in here. He just keeps wanting to come in here now and sit on his little bed, don't you? And I think you're going to enjoy it when it's sunny. Right now, it's getting a bit chilly. But yeah, we've put 
loads of plant pots on all the shelves, gathered plenty of stuff that we found on this farm, like these trays with drainage, more. I've gone out and bought absolutely tons of modular pots. I'm ready to uh, thin out many of these seedlings. I've got plenty. I've got broccolis, cabbages, spring onions, they're not doing anything. Chard, pak choy, loads of stuff. Oh, look at me courgettes. And all of these shelves were perfect to come in here. I do want to cover them up though. It is getting a bit chilly. In fact, the first thing I'll do is close the window. Put that back. God, do you remember window openings like this in houses? But there is an issue that we've discovered after replacing all of the glazing is this. It just stops. And I think there's some screws protruding at the bottom and no matter how much I've tried to pull this in, it just doesn't close. So if you've got any suggestions, please let me know. I might just have to put some something here to stop any drafts. But yeah, I am very happy though with how it turned out. I really, in the end, enjoyed the process of cutting glass. The more I did it, the more I enjoyed it because I wasn't making mistakes anymore. I had to put even pressure throughout, try to stick to my guide, and I just got better. I highly recommend it. I don't know how much this glass is to actually replace because I went on Amazon and they were charging $16.99 per square, and I thought that was insane. And the other thing that my dad pointed out was the pretty standard pieces, these are imperial, it's two foot squared or one and a half foot by two foot. So if I break one, I can just nip out and buy one without having to cut any. But now I know how to cut them if I need to make good from any broken ones. But yeah, I'm loving this. And now I've definitely got the confidence to put the new one up somewhere. It's just where, I don't know where we're gonna put it. And you might have noticed it's probably turning into a more of a potting shed now. This is very useful, but hopefully I can take this out because I've treated it, find a home for it elsewhere, to start taking over with tomato plants and anything that needs sun and heat. But if you do anything differently, please let me know below. And if you've got any net recommendations for the other greenhouse, again, I think I need something for that. Definitely want to put that to good use. It's looking a little bit sorry for itself now. So it looks like I've now got some thinning to do. So yeah, hopefully I'll catch you in my next one. Thanks for watching. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.